Gav here in Portugal as round number five of the Finnish work. FIM Junior GP World Championship and what a place it is. Situated on the south of Portugal near the Atlantic Sea. It's one of the most picturesque circuits in the entire world. And last year's winner was the Australian Joel Esteban taking his first victory of the season. But as we roll into 2022, who will it be? Will it be Jose Antonio Rueda to continue his championship assault? The number 99 in commanding form so far here in the Finnish work FIM Junior World Championship. And Tristan, this is the main class of the road to MotoGP, as we would say. This is just a step down from the Moto3 World Championship, and this is where the next big talent comes from. Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, it is the stepping stone into Moto3. If you want to get into the GP paddock, if you want to get into Moto3, you have to go through this first. This is what we'd say is the premier class of of, um, of the for Network FIM Junior B GP Championship. Obviously, we have Moto2, more powerful bikes, but this is the class everyone comes to watch. This is where you see who is going to be in Moto3 in the, in the coming years. A lot of these riders, they've done Moto3 well cards already last year and this year, and they're preparing to go to, to make that step up to the GP paddock. They are indeed, and lots of great talents have come through. The likes of Izan Guevara and Pedro Acosta last year as the Moto3 World Champion are some of the couple that have come through in recent times. Fabio Quattarado, the MotoGP champion, has also come through this as well. Matt, Mark Marquez, Peco Bagnaia, some really big names. And who will be the next big star to come through the Finite Work FIM Junior GP World Championship? As we talk right now, it seems to be Jose Antonio Rueda, your championship leader, the number 99 on the Australia Galicia team bike that is leading the way. And he not only leads the championship here, but he also leads the championship in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. An outstanding talent as the Spaniard. Yeah, he's, he's doing pretty well, isn't he? He's doing all right, I think. Yeah, so uh, yeah, leading the championship here, leading the championship over in the Red Bull Rookies has been so consistent, has been so dominant in the class. We see demanding victories from him. Here's what happened last time out then at Jerez. It was Jose Antonio Rueda who was on, who took the whole, well, who was started from second. It was Colin Vaya who took the whole shot. Rueda eventually got to the front on the number 99 machine. Angel Becaris was also making some big, big moves during the race. 38, David Salvador was also putting in some big moves in race one, but unfortunately crashed out right before the end. And it was the number 95, Colin Vaya, that took his first victory of the season and his first victory in the Junior GP. He wanted to repeat it in race two, again, starting from pole position. Um, but it, it was the number 99 of Jose Rueda who cleared off out the front by uh, by some considerable margin. Then it left this big freight train of battling, this big freight train of riders battling it out for second place. They were battling all race long. The number 80 of David Alonso was in there fighting out. Colin Vaya unfortunately went wide. Then the number 31 of Eddie O'Shea fought his way through to the mix to the podium. But it was Rueda who took another win on his campaign, celebrating again. And do we expect to see the same again? He is looking strong. He's looking incredible. Um, there's no other superlatives we can give him. Uh, he's just outstanding so far this year. If he's not been if he's not been winning, he's finishing second. Either or, and he's on such form at the moment, it's going to take some to catch Rueda and stop him from running off into the distance because he has already 71 points clear at the top of the standings. That is a big ask as we start the second half of the year. Yeah, absolutely. So a bit, I mean, so far this season, he started the race always from the top two. This is the first time he's not going to start from the top two. I believe he's down in um, he's down in P P6. I believe yeah, P6 for Jose Rueda. So it's this is the furthest down we've ever seen him seen him start. But in Moto3, they're battling so much. Does the grid position even matter? Not at all, because we've seen in the past. We've even seen in the Hawkers European Talent Cup, riders come from the back of the yeah. grid and end up mixing it in the front group for the win. So anything can happen. It is Moto3, of course, and as we've seen it many times in the past. And here at the Finnet Work FAM Junior World Championship, lots of battling from the back of the grid. We've seen it in the World Championship, we've seen it in Red Bull Rookies. Doesn't matter where you start, as long as you're in the mix, by the, end, by the start of the first, uh, the start of the last lap, then anything can happen. You have a chance of winning. And there's only one time it matters crossing the line, that is the last time when you yeah. cross the line. Yeah, there will be plenty of action all the way through the race as ever. But like you say, it's all about that last lap. Adrian Cruzes then will line up on pole position. I believe that's his, uh, his first pole position of the year. Um, he's ninth in the championship. His best result so far is fifth. That was all the way back at Estoril. So 
he was looking really good in free practice. I think he can he can he can fight for the podium at the very least in this race. Starting from pole position, perfect place to start. Oh, dude, that's the best place to start. And it wasn't just one fast lap he set at the end of qualifying, it was two in a row. Yes. And it, this is also his first ever front row start as well. So not only does he take pole position to make it his first ever pole position in the Finland Work FIM Junior GP World Championship, he also makes it his first ever front row start as well. So Adrian Cruces, the number 11 on the Cuna de Campione's machine, will be, well, in prime spot to chase after his first win of the season as well. But also chasing his first podium of the year as well. And he's only had his best result in the championship was here last year at Portimao when he finished third on the podium. So he'll be hoping for more of the same. He gets on really well with this circuit and that is proof of the, pr proof of the pudding when he takes pole position and finished third here last year as well. Yeah, absolutely so. So we know he goes well around this circuit, so we can expect to see good things from Adrian Kuzes, of course, starting from pole position in the Finetwork FIM Junior GP. This is their only race of the day. This is their only race at Portimao for the year. So everything that they've worked for this weekend, everything that they've come here for is, is now. All the results, the only result that matters is now. There is, there is nothing else this weekend. So expect to see some great racing in this one they're all going to be going out there looking to try and pick up as many points as possible before they head to Mazzano next which Mazzano first time for junior gp yes, this is what happened in qualifying yesterday for Adrian Cruces. estoy muy contento por esta pole porque como has dicho nunca nunca había hecho una pole en el pince y bueno he cuadrado las dos últimas vueltas he podido hacer 48-1 y bueno muchas gracias al equipo y a mi familia que me está apoyando desde casa y mañana en la carrera daremos el máximo Cuando he empezado la sesión he hecho 49.5 y con todas sus alas, pero con todas nuevas, la verdad que he bajado mucho, mucho de lo que me esperaba, la verdad. Lo voy a intentar es hacer una buena salida, intentar tirar lo máximo que pueda, intentar abrir un hueco. Va a ser complicado porque eh, igual hace aire en contra, no se va a saber y los rebujos aquí en este circuito son muy importantes, así que veremos. There was your pole man then, Adrian Cruzes, like we said, looking in fine, fine form so far this weekend. As man as well, starting from P2, we can expect to see him doing some great, great things. The Malaysian on the number 63 machine. He's had a few wild cards over the World Championship this year, so he'll be looking to uh, to rack up as many points as possible. I mean, he's he's fifth in the championship. He's had two podiums already. He had one win, not this year. He's had a win back in back in 2021. So can he break that that um, can he get that first win of the season? Well, all his silverware does tend to come at the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. That's where he picked up his win True. last year. Yeah, yeah, and that's where he picked up his two podiums so far this year as well. So he'll be hoping to break that duck in yeah. many ways. Of trying Prove to that he's not a, a one-track special. Yeah, one -track a, a one-hit wonder, really. So hopefully he'll be doing that here today. The, the young Malaysian, the number 63, Asman, going from second on the grid. So, yeah, he's an incredible rider, is Asman. One of the more experienced riders on the grid. He's been here for quite a while, has Asman. Lots of lots of pedigree and lots of different championships. He's raced over in Asia as well. And he's also done, as you said, a couple of wild cards in the World Championship in the past as well. Yeah, and he's um, proof in the pudding that, that the, the, this MotoGP path works, this road to MotoGP path works, because he's come through Asia Talent Cup, we see a lot of these riders come through Asia Talent Cup, British Talent Cup and the likes, Northern Talent Cup. Um, and then the next step is then to go into here, European Talent Cup and then into Junior GP and then make your way into the GP paddock. He's already been making his way into the Junior GP paddock. He is proof that this road to MotoGP formula that, that Dorna has created is really working. Yeah, it's working absolute wonders at the moment. And we are starting to see lots of talent, not just come out of Central Europe, out of Spain, out of Italy, but we're starting to see it come from all walks of life now. And lots of, as we see, the likes of Sonke Shantra, Ayogura and Moto2 now. They're past uh, winners and champions in Asian Talent Cup. And they're now going on to become race winners in Moto2 and also knocking on the door of MotoGP. So it's a great, it's taken a little bit of time for all to start working. But these, these great things do take time. And we're now beginning to see with the Asian Talent Cup, British Talent Cup as well, Northern Talent Cup and there's lots more in the pipeline as well. So it's a great stepping stone 
on the way here to defend and work FAM Junior GP World Championship. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping if you're just tuning in for the first time and wondering why the Defend and Work FAM Junior GP race hasn't begun just yet. That's because we had a red flag in the Hawkers European Talent Cup race just before this, a crash for your championship leader at the time, the number 47, Dodo Boggio. The race was stopped because of an incident at turn number five. Now, Dodo Boggio was well and truly okay from that but the other riders involved as well. But we had to have the race stopped. It was delayed for about 20, 25 minutes, so that's why the start of this race has been delayed as well. So we're supposed to get underway just over nine minutes ago, but we will be underway very soon for, well, round number five here in Portimao, this picturesque roller coaster of a circuit here in the Algarve. Yeah, looking forward to getting this race uh, underway. Um, their only race of the day, so it's all to play for here in Portimao. And uh, soon they will be going out for their sighting up lap to line up on the grid for their one and only race of the day. Plenty of names in there that, uh, that can possibly fight for race wins, that can fight for podiums. So it's going to be an exciting race and, um, and can't wait to, to, see in, to see it and to, uh, to see it get going. Um, Harrison Voigt as well, a rider who we saw in pre-practice, in qualifying, has been going really well. He's going to be starting from third place on the grid. Um, the, he's 16 years old, he's riding for the 658 team, of course, that run by, by Paolo Simoncelli. Um, did really well here in Portimao as well, in the Red Bull Rookies at the beginning of the season with, with MotoGP. Didn't quite make it onto the podium, but he was in podium contention the whole time. I believe he finished in, he finished in, four, in fourth spot back in Portimao. But also, he's had a bit of bad luck here at Portimao. Last year had a big, big injury. Yeah, it was a huge injury here last year. Crashed on the exit of turn at number eight. The crest just over the hill. Unsighted, he was there on the track, unsighted, and the riders came around and they had nowhere to go. And yeah, big injury for Harrison Voigt, but thankfully he's back. He's meaning business, and it seems to be that the crash of last year has not deterred him whatsoever because he was out there yesterday during qualifying. He was the, the first rider to improve in the afternoon session, and he was improving lap after lap after lap. And it was only Asman and Cruces that they ended up toppling him at the end of the session. But he did have, at one point, a three-tenths of a second gap at the top of the standings before they put in the fast laps towards the end. So Harrison Voigt, around this Portimao circuit, he's got a lot of history here, yeah. but today he's going to be hoping to write good history. Yeah, absolutely. More like what happened in the Red Bull Rookies, less like what happened last year at the Fan Network FIM Junior GP. Of course, rebranded this year for the 25th anniversary of the championship to now be the Fin Network FIM Junior GP. It's going to be a 16 lap race for these guys. Can't wait to get it started. It's going to be great. Yeah, the 16 lap race, which will be beginning in just under four, 14 minutes' time. So at 13.25 local time, this race will get underway. And what well, we're picking up, or we're begging up, Jose Antonio Rueda at the top of the program and also third practice. In and before qualifying, he was the man to beat. He was a couple of tenths clear every single session. But in the afternoon heat, right about this time yesterday, when it was time for Q2, he did improve his time, but he couldn't make that big difference compared to the rest. Now, does that mean that in the heat, everyone catches back up to him? Or was he just focusing on race pace? Because he has done that in the past. Instead of going out and banging in qualifying times, he just focuses more on the race pace and thinks to himself, well, as long as I'm starting top, top two rows, then I can work from there. Yeah, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, he's focusing on his race pace. That it will be his main priority. Only one race um, this weekend, so it, ne it needs to count. Um, but at some point in within those two qualifying sessions, he will have done a lap where he will have pushed for a qualifying lap. He will have done at least one, at least one or two, where he was been, would have been pushing on to try and get himself somewhere in a decent position on the grid. We know he can qualify. He's, he's finished in first and second all season long in qualifying. So we know he can do it. So I, I, I do believe sixth was just the best he could do in qualifying. I believe that to be true as well. Yeah, five riders just ahead of him that did a slightly better job, but qualifying here in the Junior GP means absolutely nothing unless you can convert it into a race rhythm and race pace as well. There is your championship leader, the number 99, Jose Antonio Rueda, leads the championship. I, th I think they knew I was about to see this because he leads the championship by 71 points over David Salvador with Angel Piqueras at third, just one point further back. So the second, third, and fourth, there's only two points covering those three there. Incredibly close championship, 
but for the fans, for neutrals like ourselves and the fans here at the Portimao circuit, yeah, Rueda is clearing off into the distance in the championship, but he has been the standout rider in the field all year, so you can't really begrudge him of that. No, yeah, absolutely. Like, like you say, just absolutely clearing off in the field, and hopefully, for the sake of uh, for the sake of an entertaining race, he doesn't do the same here today. Very complex, difficult circuit is the um, is the circuit here at Portimao. So expect to see a different different names at the front that, that we're used to seeing. We saw it in, in, in European Talent Cup. We saw some names that we aren't used to seeing up there and hopefully we'll see we'll see the same again. Um, Adrian Cruzes then on his first pole position of the year, riding for the Cuna de Campeones team. He didn't finish last time out at Jerez. Has had a, an up and down season, but he's been relatively consistent. He's going to be looking to try and get out of that top five and get into the top three now. Yeah, hopefully picking up his first podium of the year and pole position is absolutely the place to do it. Adrian Cruces going from first pole of the season and starting alongside him is the Malaysian of Syrofidin Asman. And as we spoke, he will be hoping to break the duct of only having podiums at the Catalonia circuit because from second in the grid, he sort of came out of nowhere in qualifying. He was featuring down towards the, the bottom half of the top 10 for most of qualifying. It was only the final few minutes we really found that sweet spot, that that lap that really got him into the onto the front row and as you can see there are two podiums at the Catalonia circuit and then also two fourth places but a little bit of inconsistency because he's followed that with a 14th spot as well and a seventh to start the season so a little bit up and down from Asman but in the middle half the middle part of this the first half of the year he was really ho starting to find his form and he'll be hoping to do that as we start uh, the second half of the 2022 season. Yeah, keep an eye out on the number 63 Malaysian, but keep an eye also on the number 29 Harrison Voigt from Australia, looking in fine form so far this weekend. We know he goes well around Portimao. He went well in the Red Bull Rookies earlier on. He's currently 11th in the championship. His best result so far, you can see it on the graphic, has been sixth place. So he's going to be looking from third place on the grid to try and improve on that before this weekend. His best grid, grid spot has been P2. So he does know what it's like to start from the front row. So hopefully this time he can use it to, to his best advantage and try and pick himself up a podium. He really has been featuring near the front all season long, but when it's come to crunch down towards the end of the race, it's not really worked out for him and he's found himself just on the wrong side of a battle as well. But in fourth in the grid, we've got the number 58. That's a number that you like really well. Isn't it, Tristan? You've, got, you've, got, a tattoo that, yeah. <laughs> you've got a tattoo of it on your arm. You used to race with it. So he's carrying your number. Well, it's also the number of Marco Simoncelli. He's carrying it because of me. I, I was his inspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tristan Finacchiaro. Well, I mean, the Italian runs in the blood, doesn't it? So, <laughs> so look at Lanetta, who topped morning warm-up this morning. So was looking really, really strong in the morning session. But that was some three hours ago now. So track temperatures, air temperatures, everything has changed. But it'll just give you that little bit of extra confidence going into the race. Yeah, absolutely. Like like you say, um, we'll give you that extra little bit of confidence going in the race. And, and a rider that's coming in to this race with plenty of confidence is the number 18 of Angel Paqueras. A rider we've seen at the front of this championship so much on that number uh, 18 machines. Picked up podium so far this season, a second back at Valencia and a third spot as well. Rookie sensation, only 15 years old from Valencia. We see a lot of these riders that sort of age, and it is so impressive to see how quickly they're progressing because this is such a high level of racing. And to be able to see that, another rider who's also riding as well over in, in the Red Bull Rookies, fifth in the championship over there. He's had a win in a couple of podiums there as well. So such an incredible depth of field. And then here is the man of the year so far. Jose Antonio Rueda, your championship leader. And there you can see how impressive his season has been. His lowest result has been fourth, and that was at race one in Valencia when he was a little bit beaten up in the last lap. But he put that to put that right in race at number two to take his first win of the year. But since then, he's been on a streak of three other wins and one second place. Last time out in Jerez, he just cleared off into the distance and won by a, such a large margin. Yeah, and if he wins this race here, he can become the eighth rider to win five races in just in one single season. And he's going to be joining some big names in that. Yeah, the likes of Fabio Cotterat, well, not Fabio Cotterat, Avara Batista, Polis Bargo, Izan Guevara, and Danny Holgado. Now, two of them have become champions here in recent years, so he's joined a great list of that. And once again, we've got to thank, thank our fact stat man, <laughs> Kiko yeah. Giles, yeah. for that one as well. So he's given us all these uh, fantastic facts here this weekend. There's Farioli in seventh spot. 
Fourth in the championship is Farioli, the Aspar Junior Team rider. 80 points he is on. He's not been on the podium for a couple of races. He'll be wanting to amend that one with a podium here today to really get himself back into, well, get himself back in the championship charge. <laughs> Everyone's trying to get themselves back, back into championship charge with... Uh, Jose Antonio Rueda clearing off into the distance. There's Joel Esteban just uh, wishing him luck. He just finished his Hawkers at European Talent Cup race. We won't give away the results in case you want to go back and rewatch the race. It was some race all the way down to the line. So if you've missed the Hawkers European Talent Cup race, go back and watch that. And Joel Esteban featured near the front as well. Yeah, so obviously those two teammates, but in, in different categories. Um, Joel Espan in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. A little bit further back on the grid, we have Tachikon Buazri, the, the Thai rider, who's picked up a win before on his season. It was um, His win was the first race, the very first race of the year. And that's actually been his only podium of the year as well. So on and off season, I think you can safely say for, for the 22-year-old. He's been there or thereabouts in every single race, but for what other reason or another, it doesn't work out for him. He'll end up dropping back. He crashed out at race number two in Valencia. And then he's, he went on a run of form of finishing around about 12th, 13th ever since then. Picked it back up in the last race at Jerez with fifth. So maybe that'll just give him the extra little confidence again. Starting from eighth in the grid, it's not too far back. So it can put him well and truly within the mix. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, and another rider we see consistently at the front in this championship is the number 80 of David Alonso down in ninth spot on the grid not where he'll be wanting to start the race from he won't be happy with that um, he's had one win all the way back at Valencia again um, his only podium of the of the year has been a win so it just shows how competitive this this class is anyone can can take the win at any point in time unless Rueda clears off with it yeah which which could happen we'd hope it doesn't happen just to, to give us a cracking race but going through the list of the names in the grid we can just see how many great riders there are but David Alonso he gets on really well with this Portimao circuit he was a two-time winner here last year in the Red Bull Rookies Cup so he'll be hoping to channel that into victory contention here today as well yeah, and that again shows how competitive the championship is. A race winner here in a very competitive class, in the Red Bull Rookies class, and he's down in P9. The depth of field here is so, so impressive. And we were looking yesterday at the lap times. They're not that far off the, the Moto3 World Championship lap times. It was only more or less well, half a second, I think it was. Yeah, the, the lap record from last year when, well, we had a downpour here in the MotoGP championship this year for qualifying. But last year when it was representative, it was only half a second off of Gabby Rodrigo's mm. That, and you know, that's, they are obviously the, the best of the best in Moto3. And these guys are only half a second off. These guys and girls are only half a second off. So amazing, amazing as well. Yeah, we just saw Eddie O'Shea there um, on the, the British talent team bike. He's going to be looking to get a good start there from, from down in P10. Was going really well in qualifying yesterday. Was in, in, in some of the top spots, in the, within the top five, and then just got knocked down towards, towards the end of the session. So he's, he's going to be wanting revenge. He will be wanting revenge, and he produced an incredible ride at Hareth in race number two, did, coming yeah, through did. the field from nowhere to snatch a podium at the absolute depth of the, the race, picking up his first podium in the Finite Work FIM Junior World Championship. So we're clearing the grid now, which means only one thing, Christian, that means we're about to get the race underway for which is going to be an absolute incredible barnstormer race. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you say, it will be an incredible race. So looking forward to get this, getting this one underway then. The only race of the day here in Portugal in the Algarve at the Portimao circuit for the Finetwork FIM Junior GP World Championship. Lining up on pole position then is the number 11 on his maiden pole position, Adrian Cruthers. And now we'll have a little, little look at the grid. Like we said then, starting on pole position, Adrian Kuthez on the number 11 machine, ahead of Asman on the number 63. The Malaysian looking to rack up some points on his championship, ahead of Harrison Voigt, looking to get his first podium of the year on, the num on that number 29 machine. Lunetta, a career best fourth, ahead of um, down, down in fifth place, Angel Pequeras. Down on row four, Eddie O'Shea, the Brit, will start from 10th position ahead of Almanza and Colin Vaya, who's on, on pole and took a win last time out in Jerez. So he'll be looking to pick up the points there. Rounding out the top 15 was, uh, top 15 was Noah Detweiler. A little bit further back, you've got Sharil Rosenthaler and Carraro rounding out the top 21. And fronting row eight, the number 19 of Morasi ahead of Aditama and uh, Rodderstone, the, uh, the Australian rider, all the way down back there on the grid. And rounding out the final spots on the grid are Gordon Hamada and... Uh, Austin on the number 89 machine. 
Now, such an incredible depth of field, like we've already been talking about. Even right the way down to the bottom, the times are so close. Incredibly close. They, it's incredibly difficult to find headway within this class because a little mistake in your last lap in qualifying can put you either on the front row or can put you on the fifth row. It's incredible. It is one of the most competitive championships in the entire world is the Finnegorg FIM Junior GP World Championship. Now the Raiders set off on the warm-up lap. Adrian Kruschez goes from his first ever pole position in the class. And starting alongside him will be Asman and Harrison Voigt, who will be hoping to put to bed the ghosts of Portimao here in 2021. Yeah, of course, Harrison Voigt last year picking up a big, big injury. Unfortunately, he, uh, after that big crash, like I say, was completely unsighted. Broke his femur, his fibula and his tibia all, all in one foul swoop. So uh, all rested and recovered now, though. Picked up some brilliant positions earlier in the year at Portimao in the Red Bull Rookies and was fighting for podiums all the way, putting in some really brave moves as well. So he's going to be looking to continue that form here in the Junior GP. Plenty of action coming your way then as they go around for their warm-up lap. Looking forward to this one, Liam. This one's going to be an absolute cracker. Portimao in the Algarve Sun with some Junior GP bikes racing around. You cannot beat a Sunday here in July. I know it's, it's impossible to call, but I'm going to put you under pressure. Who's your prediction for the race win? That is absolutely impossible to call, and I can't believe you've done You're this to because I am really <laughs> struggling. It is... <laughs> Racking through my head, I've Just already pick got a name. Yeah, I'm going to pick a name out of the hat, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Angel Pequeras. Go for it. Angel Pequeras, the number 18. Why? I just no reason whatsoever, okay. <laughs> other than he's just there. <laughs> but no, he's a good rider. Yeah, he's a great rider, and Angel Pequeras, incredible. Looked good all weekend. Has been looking fantastic for the last few races. It just feels like that he's been inside the top five all weekend, and. Jose Antonio Rueda, who has also been another rider inside the top five, is starting alongside him. And Angel Pacares, he just seems like he's just ready, ready. He's going to come out swinging for this one as well. So he's got to be a good pick for this one. And then I've got to return the question to you. Who are you picking for this race oh, here I today? I knew you were going to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. I, I, cannot let, I cannot let you get away you know with what? that I'm one. I'm going to go for my fellow number 58. I'm going to go for Luca Linetta. And just because he's number 58? No, no, because he's looking strong. He's Italian. He's, good, he's in a good run of form, and I think he'll do well. And he's got the number 58 as well. And that he's got the number 58, so he's got, the, <laughs> he's, got, he's got good luck on his side. Of course, running the number 58, because his hero was uh, Marco Simoncelli, so running that number um, based on that fact. So all these riders coming up to the grid then to start their only race of the day here in Portugal. It's going to be Adrian Cruzes lining up on that pole position. Keep an eye out as well for the number seven of Filippo Varioli in seventh, starting from seventh position on the number seven machine. He's going to be looking to pick up some points as well, a strong rider in this category. Here they go then. They line up on the grid. The lights are going to be going out very, very shortly. The tensions are rising. The, the nerves are rising here in Portimao. This is their only race of the weekend. Who's it going to be that's going to take the whole shot down into turn one? Eyes are to the lights for the only time this weekend. And it's a good start from the middle of the front row. Asman looks as if he's going to take the whole shot, but uh, for a little bit further, we've got a rider unfortunately stalled on the grid, but it is Asman then who takes the whole shot. A couple of riders up there. That's Buazri up the inside looking menacing. Now Cruzes down to second. Harrison Voigt maintains third. And that's really, really unfortunate for the rider there. That's the, uh, the number nine. 93 who's unfortunately gone down and out. Well, not gone down and out, but unfortunately hasn't even managed to start the race. So really unfortunate there for that rider. But now up out the front, it's Asman who has the lead. Yeah, that's who Chimi that managed to never to not get away. But Rueda's up the inside for third spot of Cruces, your pole man's go. And that's Pequeras running the inside, turn number five. Has he made it stick? Yes, he has, because Angel Pequeras was not lying down for that one. So Angel Pequeras is now up into fourth spot following his teammate Rueda through. These two have both come through from the second row of the grid. Rueda's not stopping there, up the inside of Harrison Voigt. And that is a corner that Voigt will be getting some flashbacks back to last year and not good ones at that. So Rueda, second spot, just behind Asman and Pequeras trial. Trying around the outside again. Will he make a stick? No, he won't, but he will get the inside lane into the right hander. And late oh, on the brakes, pushing. Oh, Pekeras touches Voigt. They both go a little wide, but both staying on. That's the important thing. So Voigt keeps third spot for now, but Pekeras is hassling him every single way. And here comes Rueda. 
We're not even a lap down, and he's already gone from sixth to first. Carved his way through the pack. Now it's all down to Asman. It's all down to Voigt. They need to bike back at him right now because they know if he gets in his rhythm, we know he's capable of clearing off at the front. Is he capable here at Portimao? We'll find out, but it is so important now that Asman snaps straight back on him. He's got to get a good slipstream down onto this front straight. He's got good drive. He's right in his slipstream. Rueda's trying to shake him off, but now Asman has gone side by side. He, this is so important. He needs to be able to snap back now. Looks like um, Asman may have, yeah, Asman has done it, and his, Pekiras is now into the third spot, but Voice baiting back uh, to Pekiras. Oh, look Rueda. at Farioli! Farioli out of nowhere takes, <laughs> wow, into the third place at turn number one. Farioli is having a bit of this here today and ports him out, but Rueda snaps back at Asman, not quite late in the breaks. Crucius pushing Voice out, someone off in the background as well, chopping, changing every which way you look, but for now it's still Asman and Lisa Race on the sick racing. Number 63 machine, but Rueda side by side is ahead down to turn number five. He's got the inside line for the corner, but Farioli from third to move. first pushes Rueda out wide. So Farioli from seventh on the grid on the number seven. He now leads the race on the yellow helmet. Can I, can I change race. my prediction? Am I allowed to do No, that? you cannot change your prediction. <laughs> All right, Farioli then it is that leads on the number seven machine. A brilliant start from him from seventh place on the grid. So it's your sixth place man on the grid who's made his way up into P2 and your seventh place man who's now made his up way up into P1. So it just proves what he said. Does qualifying even matter here? Look at all this. And David Alonso's made good, good ground as well. He's up into fifth spot from ninth on the grid as well. Going up the inside of Voigt and uh, Voigt's running around the outside of him. He's having absolutely none of it. And then we've got David, well, David Alonso's there and David Salvador as well. He's making some ground up as well from further down the grid. So it's all chopping and changing. The cream of the crop and the championship are now starting to find a way to the top. Yeah, lovely stuff from all of these guys. We're going to need to take a breath here because it's going to be like this all race long. So we've got to make sure we don't blow out here. But uh, yeah, like we say, race action, close race action all the way through these races, as always in the Fin Network. FIM Junior GP Farioli, really, really strong through that final corner there. But it's going to be Slipstream City onto the back straight once again. But Farioli is then that still maintains that race lead as it stands at the moment, but expected to change as the race goes on, as they're all side by side down the front straight. Look at all of this. And how well we've got chopping and changing four abreast into turn at oh. number one. David Alonso slots into second just behind Rueda, who retakes the lead. Fastest lap of the race for David Salvador. We, we can't, <laughs> the timing monitors here in the comms box can't e even keep up. So fastest lap of the race. There is Salvador there, trying to get up the inside of Pequeras. So Pequeras, my prediction, has been punted all the way back down to the fringes of the top 10. But this is a sight we don't want to see. Rueda beginning to open up a small gap as Farioli tries to bite back at the number 80 of David Alonso. And then further back in the, the screen there, we just saw that's Eddie O'Shea. Eddie O'Shea, he's up into ninth spot now, pushing past his teammate uh, Tachikon Buwajri. Yeah, he's looking real, real uh, racy is the number 31 of Eddie O'Shea. So expect to see him climbing up through the field in this race. We saw him do it back at Areth, managed to, managed to pick up a podium there, but now Rueda has hit the front. Is he going to be able to pull away? He looks as if he's already got a little bit of breathing space. It's all down to Farioli now. Uh, well, it's all down to um, David Alonso now. It's all down to these two. This Gas Gas Aspar Jr. team, they both need to be able to work together to claw back in Jose Rueda now because he's just pulling away. We've seen it do him, seen him do it so many times, and this is not going to help. That's just going to allow Rueda to, to pull away out the front. Yeah, Farioli making a move on his teammate. He didn't need to do that. He didn't need to do it. He could have waited for the long straight. That's uh, that's at least uh, seven tenths of a second. He's telling, he's telling David Alonso to follow him. So Farioli clearly feels like he has the pace to catch Rueda, but Rueda is off and running as we're about to start lap number four. So as we start, as we head on to the home straight, David Alonso pulls out of the slipstream of Farioli. Harrison Voigt's there. What is the gap to Rueda? It's eight tenths of a second. He's pulled that out in one solitary lap. So as these guys further back keep battling away, that just gives Rueda a great chance yeah. to pull a gap. And Farioli, he's not having any of it. He's And Rueda does set the fastest lap of the race. That is not what, well, that's something to be expected, a 48.2. So That's as soon faster as, than the pole time. That is faster no, than the No, it's not. It's one tenth <laughs> off. Well, if he keeps going like this, he will be faster. <laughs> it's than close enough there. to it. Yeah, it really is indeed. And there's Farioli again telling the chasing group behind to follow him. So Farioli, he's getting a little bit disrupted now. And Voigt's trying to look up the inside of him, but doesn't make his stick. So this is the time now if we can see if Farioli can catch Rueda. 
Yep, so Farioli now believes he's got something in the tank. He does look very, very strong, especially on the brakes. So if anyone can catch away, it looks as if it is going to be the number seven of Filippo Farioli, looking really, really strong on that bike. He's made his way up from seventh position, but now these guys need to work together. They can't keep fighting, they can't keep scrapping, because that's just going to let Jose Rueda pull away even more. He's already got an eight-tenth of a second lead. As When they come across the line, hopefully it won't be a second or more. Filippo Farioli then, the 17-year-old, defending this second place for the number, from the number 29 of Harrison Voigt. Fourth in the championship at the moment as it stands. His best position's been P2, so he's hungry to get a, a race win, but he can just see it slipping away from him. Yeah, that gap at the front just creeping out ever so slightly, even around this lap. Fariola trying as he might, you can see how much he's pushing on. Voigt looks over his shoulder to see who's behind him. I said, David Salvador is now up into fourth spot ahead of Alonso. So the fourth and fifth have cha dropped and changed a little bit, but here's a replay of the start. Yeah, so you can see there that perfect start from the middle of the front row for the 63 um, as man. He just got a brilliant start down and managed to take the whole shot down into down into T1. Cruz has managed managed just about to hold on to that second place. And the, the, the these these guys just swapping and changing positions all race long. Really, really unfortunate there for the number 83 of um, of Ruiz Alvaro Ruiz, who unfortunately didn't even manage to start the race. So not the, not the start to the race you would have wanted at all. Farioli then still maintaining that second place. Farioli a rider, like so many of these, and still again, telling him to follow him. Getting frustrated now, isn't he? He really is indeed, and Voigt's... <laughs> thinking, that's not going to help. Yeah, that's not going to help at all. Voigt is uh, clearly getting a little bit frustrated at Farioli. Clearly signaling to him to follow him, but maybe Voigt feels that like he has the pace to catch Rueda because the gap at the start of this I'm lap. I'm assuming they all think that. Yeah, they will. They'll think that. <laughs> They'll think the Rueda's gone. I can catch him. Follow me. But it's a it's a tactic that never works because when you're following and you see someone do that to you, it just makes you want to pass them even more. Yeah. But at the start of this lap, 1.1 seconds from Rueda to the chasing group. He's just eking out the gap ever so slightly. This is car a carby copping of what we saw in race two in Hareth where he just gets to the front and then slowly chips away at the advantage and pulls out a gap. Yeah, Farioli now taking these wide swooping lines, trying everything he can to keep this, keep his speed up, keep his momentum going and try and catch um, the number 99 of Jose Rueda out in front. Harrison Voigt that is then that currently has that second spot. You're going to think that that's going to change as they come on to the front straight one more time. It's not too far in... in Visually, but one second in racing terms is a hell of a lot. But 12 laps, well, 11 laps now to go in this Finetwork FIM Junior GP race. Filippo Farioli getting into the slipstream. It looks as if he's going to try and make a move down into turn one. But the number 29, Harrison Voigt, going incredibly defensive down the front straight, using go, going right into the inside of the circuit. It's now 1.5 seconds out the front and another fastest lap of the race, a 148.1, and that equals the pole time from today. So just incredible place. Couldn't do it in qualifying, but he's doing it in the race. Yeah, very good lap times from Weda. Much faster. quicker. Faster. It, is fa it is faster than the pole time. So if he'd done this yesterday, he'd be in a pole by a couple of, well, a couple of hundredths of a second. But it doesn't matter today where you get the points and where it all counts. Rueda is charging away at the front. Four tenths oh, of a lap quicker than everyone else further back. And a little bit of a moment there for Angel Bacares further back, I believe. But this group for second down to seventh spot are just gapping the rest of them ever so slightly down to Asman actually and eighth place so there's a bit of a gap from second down to eighth they're pulling a gap in front of Tachikon Buraja who's got Almanza, O'Shea and Luneta. Luneta, top warm up this morning can't convert that speed into race speed today because he's down 12th spot and 4.2 seconds off your race leader Rueda. Felipe Farioli then looking menacing on the number seven machine. A rider like so many of these riders come from a family of racers. I was just, point, I was just thinking, Sorry, may, maybe that, that gap at the front, I don't know if it's just my eyes, but it looks a little bit smaller from Voigt to Rueda. I could be completely wrong. It was 1.5 at the start of this lap, but it looks like maybe it's just a little bit smaller than it was. We'll see as they come across the line to see whether that gap has come down or not, or whether Jose Rueda is flying away out the front like we're so used to seeing him do on that number 99 team, Estrella Galizia bike. So, so strong on that bike and only 16 years old from Seville. He's already had four wins on the season. He's looking comfortable to take five and it's now 1.6 seconds out the front. Again, another one, low 148, 48.399. 
just ever so slightly quicker than Harrison Voigt. Asman now, Asman. what wow. a lap from Asman. A 147.929, and that is the first 147 that we've seen this weekend. Incredible lap time from Asman. He led the race at the start of the first lap, dropped back down the field to eighth. He's now regrouped himself, and he's now back on to the back of the first group. Rueda's off and running at the moment, but Asman does have the pace as well to carve his way through the field, as we've got a change of fourth place. That is Salvador up the inside of Alonso. So Salvador making some moves as well after he came from near the back of the well, not the back of the grid, but further down the grid. And Salvador is making some moves as he sees Rueda gapping the rest of the group at the front as well. But he's off and running. Maybe we should get forget about him. Harrison Voigt pops a little wheelie as he comes over the crest of the hill there. That's not going to help you whatsoever, but he manages to get it back down. But that has allowed Farioli to just pull out a couple of big lengths gap as Alonso back up the inside. Cruces as well. Oh, that's tight there. There was a lot bit of contact between Cruces and Salvador. There was nearly on the exit as well. That's given Piqueras a chance to go around the outside. But as they settle back in, Piqueras looking up the side, but Alonso and Salvador is looking back up the inside of Cruces, but not making it stick. So it as you were, as Asman has a bit of a bobble out of the seat coming through the left-hander on the exit. This is it now. This is going to be the battle for seconds all race long. Although visually, like you said last time, it looks a bit closer, but we'll see across the line because sometimes our eyes tend to deceive us here in the Karachi box. There's only a small little uh, little TV screen that we get to watch this race on. So we'll see as they come across the line. What is the gap now? Is Rueda just pulling away once again? It's down ever so slightly. Not quite enough to, not quite convincing enough to make you think that they're going to be able to catch him. Though. Well, Farioli has, has shown that he does have the speed to try and catch Rueda, but... This is the problem. Though, yeah, this is it? the problem here. He's getting beaten up by Voigt, Alonso and Cruces as well. Cruces looks up the inside of Farioli now and does make his stick into fourth place. Pushes the Italian out wide and he's now back into fifth place. So Farioli will not be enjoying any of this because, as we saw in the last lap, Farioli did have the speed to catch Rueda. And now with all of this... All of this <laughs> All of this battling behind him as Salvatore now pushes Farioli even further back. Voigt into second. Farioli has lost about three places in his many corners and he now has to do all of that work again to try and get to the front of that first group to try and catch Rueda. Rueda doing such an incredible job out the front. Rueda oh, he's out on the green though. Really That's well something we need to keep an eye on. We don't see him a lot, obviously, because we're looking at the, this battle for second. But if he's doing that a lot, that could go, that could. Uh, Eventually, if he goes out, if it's three times, isn't it? If he goes out three times, that could be a long lap penalty for Jose Rueda. So that could respark a race for the lead. Oh, and truly, yeah. So if he gets, uh, if he goes out enough times, gets a warning, then he's in big trouble because if he does that two more times, he will get that long lap penalty. And we've seen that ruin races before. This has actually happened to Rueda on the last lap in Estoril, where he ran on the green and lost that race victory and gave it to Tachikon Buadri. So last lap, Voigt was one-tenth of a second quicker than Rueda, but he was following Farioli. Farioli has now been pushed to the middle of this chasing group, but we will see this time round if that gap has eked out again as they come across the line to start lap number nine. And as the flash past our commentary box window, it's 1.5 seconds, so it's yeah, just creeping up ever so slightly. It. He's maintaining it as Salvador and Alonso carved the way through to the front of the group. Alonso in the number 80 machine ahead of Salvador on the blue, yellow and white machine now taking second and third spot. Everywhere you look in this second group, it's chopping and changing. Every time they come across to our first line, you can find yourself in second or you can find yourself in sixth. Eight laps to go then of this Finetwork FIM Junior GP race, their only race of the day. This is where it matters. This is where all the work that they've done all weekend will go into this one race. Jose Rueda then so, so strong out the front as the team look on. This is a replay of some of the action we had down into turn one. The number 80 of David Alonso, really, really strong in the brakes. You see him using every inch of the track and more. Beautiful stuff from the number eight. It's so good to see the level in, the, in, in this category. Well, yes, it's uh, the, the level you need to show teams in the World Championship what you've got and that you are a big star of the, in the making and of the future. Now, it looks like Alonso Salvador and Cruces were about to build up a bit of a gap, but then you've got Farioli riding around the outside of a lot of them nearly. He's not, he's not oh, shy. What a move! Farioli up the, the switch back there from Farioli on the number seven Rutez machine. Get it back. And he's about to go for third as well, not quite on his teammate Alonso there. So Farioli, he is aggressive. He, he does think he has the pace to gap these, this group here, but every time they get to the, the front straight, he does get pushed back down in the group as well. So that's what's frustrating him even.
even more because he's got great run out of there for the penultimate corner. Will he be up there instead of oh, Alonso? Yes, he will. Pushes his teammate out wide. He's carving his way through this group like a hot knife through butter. And now he's going to. No, it looks as if he's going to make his way up into P2, but so many of these riders are going to get a good drive onto the front straight, and that move that he made at the final corner will have hindered his drive out on the front straight, so he's lost a few positions there, but we know how strong he is on the brakes. David Salvador as well, and it's so, so close through turn one. Brilliant stuff from all these guys, but I think it's Cruces now that's made his way up into P2. On that last lap there, that group lost 1.2 seconds to your race leader. The, net, the gap has gone from 1.5 seconds now up to 2.8. Oh, look Rueda at this. is off and running, and that, this is the reason why. These guys are just carving each other up, pushing out onto the green. Was Pekeras there, so... There yeah. is a little bit of leeway, though, isn't it? If you're pushed onto the green, it's not quite seen as bad as, you know, if you're going onto the and gaining an advantage. If you're pushed onto the green, you're not really gaining an advantage. You've just been pushed there. But it's, it's, it's a system that rules will... Rules are rules. Yeah, rules are rules, though. So it's a system that will trigger that, and it'll say, oh, okay, you've crossed onto the green, so you might get a long up penalty. It can add to it. Anyway, but that it's that also is why they get m multiple times. Indeed. It doesn't have to be just once. Yeah. <laughs> You've really got to be pushing absolute limits to try and get yourself a long lap penalty. But Cruces is now at the back, uh, back at the front of this chasing group. And the pole man chasing has, well, a podium here today in Portimao after starting from pole for his first time and on from the front row for the first time in his Finit Work FIM Junior GP career. Uh, oh, Salvador trying to push past Alonso. Yeah, that was a lot bit close between those two. The Davids are side by side. They've been stuck together for this entire race so far with Farioli again, once more trying to find another way past the, the Davids of Alonso, his teammate, and Salvador, the number 38. So Farioli is looking really aggressive here today and looking really quick. There's a bit of a bobble there from Alonso coming onto the street there. Mid-corner bobble there. That's one corner you really do not want to have a moment. So, so fast through there, but then with these bikes being so light and if you just get a gust of wind at the wrong time through that fast corner, whilst you're on the gas, there's no real weight transfer through there. The weight's fairly neutral through it. There's no weight on the front or weight on the rear on the exit. So a little bit of gust of wind and you get that. Now we see Farioli now going out onto the green stuff. So that's something he's going to have to watch. Now Salvador real aggressive up the inside. Salvador, he's not shy of the move. He's not at all. He's, he's, once again, it's on his best mate, David Alonso. I'm just saying it's his best mate because they've been stuck together this entire race of uh, David Salvador and David Alonso on number 80 and 38. Machines Voigt looking up the inside of Cruces doesn't make it stick, just holding Alonso and Salvador further back. But behind this group, we have a great scrap going on for ninth spot, which is led by Eddie O'Shea, Colin Vyers in that battle as well. The winner from last time out at Hareth and race number one, they've got Luca Lanetta and David Almanza part of that train as well. That group goes all the way down to Noah Detweiler in 16th place. So a bit of a moment, it's a bit like the group we're watching here. The group behind have got a train of riders scrapping it out for the points and it's a really good scrap which is led by Eddie O'Shea on the British talent team machine. Piqueras getting very close yeah. <laughs> to David Salvador and Farioli again just behind the pair trying to look for a way through. Lay on the brakes. These guys are, very, are trying so, so hard to try and find any way through the can. Any little piece of circuit they can get to that will give them the opportunity to overtake the person in front of them. They're going for it. It doesn't matter if they touch. Yeah, Matt, if there's grip there, you can pass there. That's the, that's the rule that they tend to follow in this Finetwork FIM Junior GP. They come onto the straight for one more time then. There's still six laps to go in the, well, five laps to go now as they cross the line in this race. And they're all side by side once again, hugging the pit lane, trying to be as defensive as possible, not to allow room through for anyone, but still, they find room, they will make room in this category. That's the way it is. That's the way that racing is on low powered machinery. Cruz is now having a little look up the inside of Piqueras. Doesn't manage, or just about manages to make that move stick. He does, so brilliant move there from the number 11. Cruz is chasing his first ever podium. Was, the, was your man who was on pole position. Looks as if the win is gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit out of reach though. Yeah, it will be indeed. If, as long as uh, Jose Antonio Rueda keeps everything pointing the, the right way up, he is on for another, a fifth win of the season, and he will equal the likes of, of our Batista, Paul Espargo, there he is on screen. He's in Gravada, and last year's champion, Danny Holgado as well, to be one of the only few riders in the championship, 25 years, to pick up five wins within one season. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got a class as competitive and as strong as this, 
getting five wins within a season, that is an incredible achievement. Uh, it's an impressive set of names that he'll be joining as well. And you can only imagine that he's going to go on and win a few more races before the end of the season as well and, and join even a few more names in the, in the records. Ooh. But now look at this. How many are Brest going into such a tight corner? It's, it's incredible how they all manage to stay on. It's such close racing in this category. But now it is David Salvador on the number 38 bike on the Husqvarna, the only Husqvarna in this battle is now taken to the front of this group. This is, of course, the battle for second place with Jose Antonio Rioeda. We haven't seen much of him. He's just cleared off out the front. He has indeed. That gap is going to be well and truly over four seconds as they come across the line. Now, Voigt oh, out in the green, and you've also got Pequeras out in the green as well. You don't want to be doing that too many times. It chops the front wheel off of Salvador, fanning out as they come across our finish line. Four laps remaining. This is starting to get a little bit heated now. Three abreast in the turn number one. Who is it oh, going to be? Asman. Voigt from Fabioli, and I think it was Asman that slots into fourth position as well. And the team looking on Asman is now was at the back of the group at the start of the last lap. He's now in the middle of it as well. And he looks like he's in chance for another podium of 2022 and hopefully his first for him outside of the Catalonia circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, uh, a one-hit a one -hit wonder, a one-track wonder is Asman, and he's looking to, uh, to to take that title away from himself and prove that he can be on the podium at other circuits. He's currently in fourth spot on the number 63, the all-blue machine. That is the Malaysian of Asman. But now Farioli looking menacing on that number seven machine. What can he do about the number 29 just ahead of him? That is Harrison Voigt, the Australian on the 658. Uh, machine, of course, the team ran by Paolo Simoncelli, of course, father of the late Marco Simoncelli. So uh, all all good racing in this category. But now, Asman, all over the rear wheel of the number seven, Filippo Farioli. He's going to be looking to try and make some moves in this one as well. It's going to be like this all the way down to the wire. Yeah, Farioli found his way back to the near the front of the group again. Every time he gets to the front of it, he gets shuffled back for a few laps and finds his way to the front. And as he come across the start finish line, he ends up getting pushed back once again. But Farioli on the number seven, the Aspar team machine, with the yellow helmet, the Deglo yellow, yellow helmet in the group there, he's into third spot and will be pushing Harrison Voigt. Now Harrison Voigt and Farioli, have been having a little bit of a tiff in this race a little bit. As he came across the line a couple of laps ago, they were rubbing elbows ever so slightly. So. Yeah, no love lost between those two as they come across the start finish line. Three laps remaining, the gap in the front, 5.2 seconds. But this is the battle we are watching, the battle for second. Voigt still leads it, but Alonso now finds his oh, way Alonso. into third. Great move there. And Asman tried to find his way around the outside of Fabioli, but couldn't make a stick. David Alonso up the inside of Voigt, can't do it. But now Salvador finds his way through past Asman. And you've got Pekeras in the back of that, around the outside of Cruces. That will be a very daring move if he makes that stick, but I think he's just going to get pushed out wide by the pole man. Yeah, and I doubt, don't forget, David Alonso only had one podium so far this season. That was a win all the way back at the beginning of the season. So David Alonso is going to be determined to try and get back onto the podium. Harrison Voigt as well, a rider who's never been on the podium here. His his, uh, his best result has been sixth place, actually, for the 16-year-old. Uh, oh, 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 that's, that's, that's Piqueras. That's Piqueras. So that's your, your winning prediction who's gone down, Liam. A really unfortunate for the number 18. Salvador now on the green again as well. So we expect to see some, uh, some warnings coming up. And there's a track limits warning for the number 83, but that's a little bit further back. Yeah, the number 83, uh, Alvar Capriet. Um, so he's a rider that's Piqueras. getting the... But yeah, Angel Piqueras was struggling at the back of the group. Every time he tried to make a move on someone, he would just get knocked back ever so slightly. So clearly pushing to try and stay with this top group of six here. The battle for second still raging on with Voigt leading the way ahead of David Alonso, but running a little bit wide, looking over his shoulder. Now, is this a tactical game that Voigt is playing, knowing that he doesn't want to lead on to the front straight because he's just going to get slipstreamed past by the chasing pack? It could be a tactic that might all start trying to play this time round before they start the last lap. Yeah, absolutely. They're all going to be sussing each other out now, figuring out where the best place to pass is. But on the last lap, it's just going to be an absolute free-for-all now with two laps to go in this FIM for Network Junior GP World Championship race. It's Salvador that now hits the front of this battle, the battle for second place. David Salvador, a rider who we've seen make wild cards over in the uh, in the World Championship Moto3 paddock as well. He's had three podiums so far this season. His best result is second. So he'd be equaling his best result if it stays like this. But we know it isn't going to stay like this. Cruthez wants his first podium. Harrison Voigt wants his first podium. David Alonso wants to return to the podium. 
Filippo Farioli is looking pretty menacing as well. <laughs> yes, he's, want, he's just wanting a podium in he general. Just wants a podium. <laughs> yeah. They all want podiums. They all want podiums. That's what they're here for. Harrison Voigt on the curves, running out wide. A love ever moment there for the Australian. And Farioli rides right the outside of the Australian. What a move by Farioli. He is very menacing. He's going for a move on Cruces as well. Can't find a way past the Spaniard. The pole man just in front of him. David Salvador leads this group from Alonso, from Cruces, and then it's Farioli, Voigt, and Asman, who's been shuffled to the back of this grid as well. But then we have fanning out into the right-hander, the double right-hander, and Farioli still trying to run the, right around the outside of Voigt. Any man could end up on the podium. Oh, that was a moment there between Farioli and Voigt. Voigt's now out wide. He's down to the back of the group. That was very close between the pair, who have had a lot of... Uh, squabble in this race so far with the uh, elbow to elbow coming down the home street a couple of laps ago. Yeah, like we say, elbow to elbow, bar to bar in this Junior GP race. And this is the way it always is here in the FIM for Network Junior GP World Championship. It's Salvador that leads through turn 15. Just this time in one lap's time, it's going to decide who's going to pick up second place. It looks as if Rueda's pretty comfortable out the front there. He's got quite a hefty lead, so he's comfortable to take the race win. But it's last lap time now. Who is it going to be that's going to take second spot in this Junior GP race, the only race of the day for these guys. And, they're oh, more oh, oh, and it's a oh, massive oh, moment there. And, oh, and Alonso goes down. Harrison Voigt, is he going to... Oh, he's, he goes down as well. So that's all, two of them down. Alonso and Harrison Voigt down and out of the race. And that leads now Cruces, who's going to be... who's leading this battle for second. And that's uh, that's ruined uh, Filippo Farioli's race as well now. So it's between these guys. It's between Cruces. It's between David Salvador. And it's between Asman. Yeah, that was terrifying between Alonso and Voigt. And Voigt, once again, the ghosts of Portimao coming back to haunt him, but oh, fingers crossed, hopefully those two will be OK. That was a very fast crash in turn at number one. I thought and, uh, for a minute that Voigt was just going to make it, but then hit yeah. the gravel trap just too fast. And Didn't want to hit the wall. No, not at all. I mean, that was nice to see from Voigt. Just going over to check to see if Alonso was OK, because that was horrible. That could have ended up so much worse than it actually did. But here's the battle for second. Half a lap remaining. Rueda is off and running 7.2 seconds. Asman's looking for a third podium of the year. Khrushchev's looking for his first ever podium. But up the inside, Asman go for second. And Khrushchev's looking over at him. Side by side as they go through the left-hander. Fast Whoa. left-hander. Asman, what a move round the outside of Khrushchev. He's now into second place. Can Khrushchev respond? So here we go then, the final two corners of this Portimao circuit. Asman is that currently has second place. Rueda is off out the front. He's going to take the victory. But who's it going to be that's going to take this second place? It's between these three. Farioli is now out of the mix. Drama on this final lap. They come through the final corner for the final time. 99, Jose Rueda takes his fifth win of the season. Brilliant stuff from the 99. But who's going to take second? It's going to be Asman. Asman takes second ahead of Cruces. Cruces gets his first podium. Asman gets his first podium, not in Catalonia, and Filippo Farioli down in into uh, down in P4. Yeah, fantastic ride by your championship leader, commanding win by Rueda there uh, with the Australian Gilkia team. Nobody saw which way he went, but it was a fantastically close racing action for a second spot. Asman just taking it from Cruces, but further down, it was uh, Tachikon Buradri who came out on top of the chasing group. It was that, uh, he finished just behind David Almanza as he came across the line by just under 10 for second. David Almanza, the number 22, takes ahead of Tachikon Buradri. Luca Lanetta and Eddie O'Shea with Colin Vire rounding at the top 10 ahead of Nicola Caro, Marcus Ruda, Noah Detweiler, Arby Aditama and Alessandro Morosi rounding out your point scores. But a wave to the crowd, a wave to the fans. Rueda becomes a pop of a wheelie there between the teammates, between Asman and Rueda. I mean, maybe a little bit more work, boys, for that one, but uh, yeah, nonetheless. By not... the time you, you hit the World Championship, you're going to need to wheelie a little yeah. bit better than that. We're going to be starting throwing out some style points. I mean, he's had future. plenty of practice, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been winning left, right, and centre so far this year, picking up his fifth win of the season and only joining a club of a handful of names that have ever done that yeah. in the Junior GP World And what's so impressive, seven podiums out of eight races this and year so far. For and his way. worst result, fourth place. It's a fourth. <laughs> yeah, he's incredible on such form as Antonio Rueda, so, uh, Jose Antonio Rueda, the number 99, clearing off in the championship, leading by over 75 points, over three, over three races now. Let's take a breath, Liam. Let's, Let's take, a take a breath after that one. That was incredible racing.
Yeah, absolutely incredible stuff, as always, in the FIM Fin Network Junior GP. Another win on the season for Jose Antonio Rueda and a brilliant battle. So unfortunate there for the riders that crashed out. And then here's, here's a replay of it. So, oh, Farioli made contact with, with um, David Alonso. That forced him into the number 29 of Harrison Voigt and Voigt, Voigt just ditched it in the gravel trap there. Didn't want to hit the wall, which is, which is fair enough. So yeah, really unfortunate stuff. That was, was just about caused by Farioli, but they were all getting squeezed into, into the first corner. So we can say racing incident there for those guys. All of them wanted the same piece of tarmac and only, uh, and unfortunately looked a little bit injured there, did the number 80 of David Alonso. So really, really unfortunate for the, uh, um, for the rider there, only 16 years old was sixth in the championship going into going into this race um, unfortunately not the end to Portugal that he will have wanted but the perfect end to Portimao for the number 99 Jose Antonio Rueda like we said his seventh podium out of eight races so far Adrian Cruthers his maiden podium on the number 11 machine an incredible ride from him pole and third place Job done for Adrian Cruz as the, uh, the Valencian, uh, just 15 years old. And picking up another podium is the number 63 of Asman. Brilliant stuff from him. He was fifth in the championship going into, the, uh, going into it. He's had two podiums so far, but he's uh, what was regarded as a Catalonia specialty. Uh, only seems to, uh, to pick up his results in Catalonia, but now picking up results at other circuits as well. So brilliant stuff from the 20-year-old Malaysia, Malaysian from Kuala Lumpur. We'll be hearing from the race winner, Jose Antonio Rueda, very shortly as these guys celebrate their podiums. Absolutely delighted with second place is Asman. He's had two podiums, like we said before. He's had one win, but back in 2021. So he's got the rest of the season. This is, of course, the first round of the second half of the season. So he's got a few more races to go if he wants to pick up a win in 2022 as well. But he seems pretty happy with P2. So we're just waiting to get that, uh, that race-winning interview from Jose Antonio Rueda, of course, taking his fifth win of the season. And here's pretty much how it happened. Here's a replay down into turn one of him uh, leading the race. Asman out on the green down into turn one. Luckily, didn't pick up any penalties, but Rueda hit the front, flew away with it out the front. And then this moment, this crash, scary stuff, was three into one, simply doesn't go down into turn one at Portimao. And unfortunately, it ended with two of them going down and one of them losing a hell of a, of a lot of time. So really unfortunate for all three riders. Obviously, the two that went down, much more unlucky, but plenty of luck on the side of the number 99, Jose Antonio Rueda. Plenty of skill and plenty of luck. Here's how it went down on the final corner. No slipstream city to the line. It was pretty much an easy cruise to the line for the number 63 of uh, Savarudin Asman, who's take, who takes P2. But another brilliant win on the season from the number 99 of Jose Antonio Rueda. Really, really up, must be ecstatic with that. Almost a near perfect season so far for the young Spaniard. And he's already, already done a few wild cards over at the Moto3 World Championship as well. So expect to see that name on the world stage in the GP paddock in the future. We can expect to see him and the likes as so many riders in this championship have made their way through from the junior GP up into the GP paddock. I mean, and up into MotoGP and plenty of other categories. It is the perfect stepping stone. It is the place to be for the stars of the future. So keep an eye out for that name, Jose Antonio Rueda. Equally, keep an eye out for Asman and keep an eye out for the number of 11, Adrian Cruz. There's a brilliant weekend for him. But uh, now we have Liam is down in Park Ferme with Jose Antonio Rueda. He's going to get a word with the race winner. Jose Antonio Rueda, fifth one of the season, a commanding victory. Talk us through your race. Yes, it's incredible because in the first part of the race, I pushed in very hard and I went fast. And this is to got a little bit out um, I come pushing and finally I come the first. The qualifying also was good but in the race I can push more and good and that's all. I very very happy and thanks to my team and my managers and, and all thank you. And in Spanish as well please. Bueno la primera parte de la carrera empujado muy fuerte 
haciendo tiempo muy bajo y bueno, eso es lo que me ha hecho eh, tener un poco más de distancia con los demás y sacar unos segundos. Y he seguido manteniendo el ritmo a mitad y a final de carrera y bueno, al final he conseguido el primer puesto que es muy importante para el campeonato. Estoy muy contento y bueno, se lo quiero agradecer al equipo que ha trabajado muy duro durante todo el fin de a mi familia que ha venido aquí a verme y a todo el mundo que me apoya. Muchas gracias. Congratulations, Jose. Thank you. Here's how it happened then. The, the only race of the weekend for the FIM for Network Junior GP. It was Asman that took the whole shot from the middle of the front row and it was battles all the way through. Unfortunately, number 83 didn't manage to start the race, but Filippo Farioli was looking incredibly, incredibly menacing on that number seven machine. Was well determined um, all the way through the race. Eventually, Rueda managed to hit the front and he flew away with it once again. Another race, another win for Jose Antonio Rueda. But then it left this amazing battle for second place. Filippo Farioli was trying to lead most of it. Harrison Voigt was in there as well. These, and this just went on all race long. Adrian Cruzes also from pole position was looking pretty menacing on the number 11 machine. Swapping positions all race long on the track, off the track, on the green, on the black stuff. It went on all race long. David Salvador was also in there as well on the number 38 machine, as well as the number 80 of David Alonso. They were fighting it out all race long. Cruzes managed to hit the front of the, of the group at one point, but it just ch kept changing, kept swapping and changing all race long. A few of them ventured out onto the green stuff, but no long lap penalties this time around. Uh, and Helper Keras was also making some moves throughout the race, but it just kept on carrying on like this all race long. Five abreast, three abreast, four abreast, all race long was just carrying on this way. David Salvador did manage to hit the front of the group at one point, but didn't manage to finish on the podium. Harrison Voigt was menacing all race long as well, and they were just slipstreaming each other throughout the race, down this front straight, plenty of moves being made down into turn one. Unfortunately, Angel Pagueras crashed out of the race towards the end, and then this big crash between David Alonso and Harrison Voigt, unfortunately caused by the number seven of Felipe Farioli, who lost a lot of time. And then that this left the battle for second. Jose Antonio Rueda took his fifth win of the season, and second place went to Asman, with Cruces taking his first podium in the Finetwork FIM Junior GP. Another win, another race for Jose Antonio Rueda. Time now to call for the team manager of the winning team. Your big applause for Max Morrow. So they all step out onto yes, the podium then. First podium for the number 11, Adrian Cruces. A pole position and a podium. He'll be happy with that. The perfect weekend for him. He can go home happy. Asman now proving that he's not a, Cat a Catalonia specialist. He can do it at any circuit you like. And Jose Rueda. Another win for him, fifth win on the season, seven podiums out of eight races. What an incredible performance from Rueda. We are absolutely stunned in the, in the commentary box. I am almost lost for breath out after that race. Uh, Liam, he's been down, he's interviewed the race winner, he's run back up the stairs, big flight of stairs to run up here at Portimao. Hope you've got your breath, Liam. I still haven't got mine from that race. Well, what do they need to do to be able to get Rueda in the future? Uh, it's a big question that I don't think anyone has the answer for. Even after that race, yes, Jose Antonio Rueda had broken a sweat, but I'd broken more of a sweat running back up those stairs <laughs> than he did in the first 16 laps of that race. What an incredible rider, an incredible, well, can we say champion alike now? Because he's three, point, uh, three full races clear at the head of the championship as Jose Antonio championship Rueda. Championship elect, I think, is safe to say. Yes. The Spanish national anthem rings through the paddock once again here at the FIM, the Finetwork FIM Junior GP World Championship. They have their official picture on the podium, then your top three Rueda, Asman, and Cruz. 
here's the standings then. This is how it went down. Jose Antonio Rueda takes his fifth win of the season ahead of Asman and Cruces. David Salvador just missed out on the podium with Farioli after that moment in P5 with Almanza, Buesri, Luneta and Eddie O'Shea rounding out the top nine in the only race of the day here in Portimao. Eddie O'Shea will be happy with P9, but he will have had his sights set on the podium. Further down then, rounding out the top 10 was Colin Viallo, who took a win back out in Jerez, ahead of Nikolov Carraro. Um, Marcos Ruda and Noah Detweiler rounding out the top 13 with Aditama and Morosi, rounding out the top 15 of the race here in Portimao. So an incredible race we've had here and rounding out the top 20 was Cormac Buchanan, his first race this weekend in the Junior GP. The rider running at the number 14. Um, he's still having treatment to a knee ligament that was damaged in an incident last time out at Hareth. So Cormac Buchanan bringing his first race in the, the Junior GP back home in P20. So then it was then David Alonso, unfortunately out of that crash right at the end, and Harrison Voy, and Helpicaris crashed out a bit earlier on. Unfortunate for those riders. You'd like to think we would have had a bit more of a battle down to the line if, it, if they'd have stayed on. But there it is in the championship, an 81 point lead it now is for Jose Antonio Rueda, absolutely flying out the front. The battle for second though, still completely open. Asman moves up to second in the championship with Salvador still in contention for that P2, are currently in third. Filippo Farioli and Angel Pequeras round out the top five in the championship with David Almanza also rounding out the top nine. Rounding out the top 10 is Colin Vaya, the Dutch rider who obviously got his win last time out in Hareth. Eddie O'Shea now in 11th, ahead of Voigt, Luneta, Zuratuza and Nicola Carrara rounding out the top 15 in the championship. So a championship completely open now in the Autodromo de Orgal, in the FIM for Network Junior GP World Championship. Rounding out the top 20 then is Alessandro Morosi with Lambias and Cheryl just ahead of him in that championship. So a championship completely open then, but Jose Rueda running away with it out the front but that battle for second place like we say completely open and will carry on that battle will carry on now through the rest of the season